Hey, Simon here with another Too Many Projects. The poor CD200 engine has been sitting all lonely and waiting patiently here in the house with the uh, top end down here for quite a while now, so apologies for no updates. But today, since it's rainy and cold outside, we're going to try and turn the living room into a bit of a mechanics workshop. That won't go wrong at all, will it? What do you mean? What, what bit? That, that, that's the end of there. Yeah. And then what bit is that? It's like the top bit here. Yeah. So it's got lots of bits. It's got the head and the barrels and pistons. Down, well, the barrels down there because the pistons are in there. And an inlet manifold. So since the last episode, I have full gasket set, a couple of pistons and rings, and a new hone tool. So the next job is to clean up, hone the cylinders, reattach new pistons to make sure that the problems we've been having with oil in the cylinder before are not to do with the piston rings, allowing oil up to the top of the cylinder and then get the barrels and pistons back onto the engine. So the first thing to do is get cleaning. Well, it's pretty nasty this. And the first thing I think to do is to get the old gaskets off before we worry about honing and try and get a lot of this crap off as well. I'm just using a plastic scraper first to see how much that can get off without putting any nicks or scratches in the gasket surface. It's probably not going to be strong enough to get it all off. No, that's about it. And then I've got a Stanley knife scraper here as well, which I'm going to be much more cautious with. Oh, that's much easier. And then finally, hopefully, a bit of WD-40 and some wire wool to clean off the last, to try and get that surface, those surfaces completely flat and clean. So this side where the head attaches is starting to come up quite clean now on the surfaces at the very least, but uh, feels like I've been doing it for hours. It's incredibly boring. I've probably only been doing it for 20 minutes. A lot of elbow grease involved in this job. All right, so that's starting to come up nice and flat on the surface. There's a few little bits right there. I should just get that off my finger now, I think. Um, I've managed to do a little bit of a job cleaning up the top of the fin here that no one will ever see, but I think that's going to make a, a perfectly reasonable seal on the gasket now when we put the head back on there. To try and clean inside these fins a little bit without having to get the Dremel out and really get going on it, I'm going to start by giving it a little spray of oven cleaner to see if I can get some of that grease out in this nice plain metal saucepan and then maybe get a nice stiff bristle brush in there and hopefully it'll all stiff brush it bristled stiff stiff bristled stiff bristled brush in there to try and get see if there's loosened up a lot of that grease that's in inside those fins there but um apparently oven cleaner helps so i'm going to spray it in and then leave it for 20 minutes see what happens Okay, 20 minutes has passed. I'm gonna now just fill this with a diluted, just general purpose degreaser. And I'm gonna take it down to my little, my little ultrasonic cleaning invention downstairs. 
Right, I'm going to take the weight a bit, but could you just lower it down? I got it. Don't worry. It's not, you're not low, you're not lowering it. Okay. While I add a bit of this in. What, what could go wrong? Absolutely nothing could go wrong in this scenario. I'll give it a swill about as well now. See what's see what's occurred. Time for a brush. I've got an apron on, I'm completely protected. All right, we'll give that a rinse and the, see what it looks like. There we go, so that's what I would call functionally clean. I mean, I would. I don't want to get these really shiny because then I'll have to get the rest of the engine really shiny and that's a really long job. <laughs> um, really good, nice gasket surfaces though. I've put a little bit of engine oil back inside the cylinders to stop them from rusting. So I'm done for the day, but I'll come back to you and we'll start looking at honing those, the inside of those barrels. So all we're trying to do here, we're not boring these cylinders out. We're not that far. I mean, it wouldn't be worth doing that. But you can see here in the light the, how shiny the inside of the cylinders are. And we are looking to take that shine off, remove any marks, and have a nice flat surface for the new pistons and piston rings to bed into when we put those in. So I've got my cheap hone tool off the internet. I've got my electric drill and I think what we're trying to do is get a cross hatch pattern. So as the, the drill is rotating in this direction and we go into the cylinder with the hone tool, it's going to need to go at a 45 degree angle as it rotates and moves forward. And then when it comes back, it's going to need to go at the opposite 45 degree angle so that you get a nice perpendicular lines. I did think about working out the circumference of the cylinder and the length of the cylinder and exactly timing or getting some sort of rhythm in place for the in out motion um, and the speed at which the drill is turning but then I thought to myself it's not actually that hard I think I'm overthinking things I think I just need to sort of work at feel the road this is, this is hopeless I need to just get a feel for the speed that the drill's rotating and the speed that I need to be m moving in and out. Lol. <clears throat> to get that cross hatching to work properly. So let's get it in the vise and have a go. So I've been doing some little experiments with A, the note of the drill, to try and uh, determine how long it's taking to do a full rotation and then try and get the speed of a full rotation, because it looks to me as though if I'm trying to get 45 degrees on here, it's going to be one full rotation of the drill between the top and the bottom of the cylinder. And I still think I'm overthinking it. I think everything is gonna be fine. So first of all, a little bit of liquid, better. Okay, what I learned quite quickly there is it was very easy to see as at first, as the first cut started kind of happening with the abrasive on the stone there, that if the, if the two cross hatchings were too shallow, I'm not moving fast enough. So I had to speed up my in and out motion to try and get it perpendicular. And to be honest, I don't think I went fast enough or I went too fast with the drill. I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep going. Who 
Okay, I'm pretty confident about that first one already. I don't know how easy it is to see on the camera, but shiny side, that hasn't been done yet. Nice cross-hatched matte side. First thing I'm gonna do is put some engine oil in there to stop it from flash rusting after I cleaned, cleaned and degreased this um, just a few seconds ago for you, but a little while ago for me, I learnt what flash rusting was and they do call it flash rusting for a reason. God, I've been really nervous about this job and it, although there's no guarantee I've done it right, even at this moment, I do feel like sometimes I just get in my head about stuff like this. As everyone on RuPaul's Drag Race would say constantly. Constantly getting in their heads about stuff. Constantly in their heads. Let's do the other side. Actually, it wasn't ideal when I put this in and then started moving, so I've got this new system now, which is... Get going quick. Faster, faster, faster. All about throttle control, I think. I cannot explain a single thing to you about this without it being an innuendo. Really sorry. Et voila. Cylinders honed. A little bit of engine oil on there to keep them from rusting in the meantime. Ready to bolt back onto the engine, I think. All right, so here's the engine. Before I start working on this, I'm gonna take paper towels. I'm just gonna very carefully stuff them in here. Paper towels are good. They're not good because they kind of tend to come apart a bit and you might lose some little bits of paper inside the engine. But what we don't want is little pieces of metal and bits or bits of old gasket and anything like that getting into the sump. Now, I don't know if you can see here, but this is one of my most successful tool adaptions. Turning these long nose pliers into a kind of slightly hook nosed long nose plier. Super useful all the time, as you will now see. So we've just got a little circlet, which is probably going to ping out, but I've got another one, so I'm not too bothered. But it, this, this tool happens to now fit exactly underneath it in the little notch that is used uh, just there. But the other thing that's quite good is now I can actually, rather than just prise it out, as it comes halfway out, and I prepare to close my eyes lest I lose them, I can actually get the top of the, of the pliers around it as well. Lovely. The Haynes manual does say you can uh, heat up the piston to try and get this loose, but it's not going to be that hard, I don't think. I think it just needs a little push. There we go. It's from the right angle. And then that is off. All right, same on this side then. They're not bad, these pistons, to be honest. Maybe buying the new was a bit... They weren't expensive. It's fine. It's fine. As you can see, we've got to get some more gasket material off here, clean up a little bit, and then get the new pistons on and a new gasket. So, I'll set about cleaning that up now in exactly the same way as we did a minute ago with the barrels and pistons. Ta-da! Nice clean gasket surface. I'm not going anywhere near this dirt at the moment. I just want to get the barrels on before I worry about external parts of the engine because the interior of the bottom end there is fairly vulnerable at the moment. So I've just cleaned up the gasket surface. I did get a little bit carried away over there, but we'll just gloss over that. Next, let's put together the replacement. All right, so our two oil rails and the spacer that goes in between them go on first. You don't want to be putting these on in the wrong order. Now the manual at this point has told me to put the bottom rail, then the spacer, then the top rail. The new pistons here are a different design and the spacer has to go in first because it's got a kind of part at the back where it splays out and the new and the rails go on top of that part which means I'm actually putting this one on from the bottom which I don't feel like is a good idea but there is plenty of space to make sure we're not overstretching the ring as it goes in but what I don't want to do 
is end up scratching the piston as a result. Yeah, look, that's fine. There we are. First bit done. So now we need to, this is the bit that's absolutely critical to get them the right way up or it's not gonna work. So the second ring is this one and the T wants to be going towards the top of the piston, that way up. Halfway in, all the way in, there we go. The top ring is, doesn't have to go a specific way up because it has edges on both. They're all in, let's do the same on the other one. There we go, two pistons, all done. So the next thing to do is to slide a circlip into the side so that the gudgeon pin doesn't go all the way through and then we'll put the other circlip on afterwards. Thing. And I don't know quite how I'm going to get those in there without them inevitably firing off around the basement. I think I did it. Do the same on the other side. Alright, so the circlip is in one side of each of these cylinders now. One thing I have done, which I tried very specifically not to do, is I've put the circlip on this side and this side. So if I was to put them both on, I wouldn't be able to get the gudgeon pin in and then, and then, because there'll be another piston in the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I do this left hand one first, so I've got a bit of space to work on the right here. And then the other one comes from the outside. So what I'm gonna do, look down there to make sure I'm getting that pin in the right spot. Get my gudgeon pin tool. And just shove it all the way through until it stops against the circlip on the other side. And now all I need to do is put a circlip in that tiny hole. I sort of tried to put the camera somewhere useful so you can watch something. What with this being a sort of visual medium, but I think this is going to involve me and my face going very, very close to it all. This is a bit of a better angle, I think, for the second one. So the first one has gone in, it was a ripe faff. So, new uh, gudgeon pin. And the final circlip. Oh, don't pop out, don't pop out. Oh, come on, that's what we're trying not to do. It popped in. I wasn't ready for it to pop in, it popped in. So, there we have two pistons reattached. Woo! Next, let's take out that tissue. And I want to make sure as I pull them out, anything that's on top of them falls out of the engine. There we go. All right. I think we'll go and find a gasket. I have to say, I really appreciate it when people like and subscribe and, and, and commit to YouTube culture here as I'm sharing this video, but one of the great benefits of making these videos is going back over it and remembering what you did with tiny things that are missing. I had to go over the video and remember where I'd put this and I found it. Yeah, that feels about right. Right, so first of all, from our lovely new gasket set comes one lovely new gasket. The first thing to do is to get the chain back through. Can you take a pencil, any pencil? There we go. Lovely. There's the chain, right. So now we need to lower it down and without using a okay, special tool for compressing a piston rings, we've got to try and wiggle it in. I feel like it's on the inside, no. it's not going in. It's not, it's not level though on this one. Why can't I get that to go in? Is that a... I'll be very cautious about getting this in nice and straight. But I think the pistons are in the barrels there. There we go. There we go. New pistons. 
lovely. All right, that was pretty hard to be honest. Harder than I was expecting. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one and we're going to be dismantling the head I guess. See if we can't clean that up before getting it back on the top. I'll see you then.